<laughs> Hello. Thank you for being with us today. Let's start by talking about your art. What is your chosen form of artistic expression, and how long have you been following that passion? That's an interesting question. Uh, I kind of have two. Uh, I have a degree in music, so I do enjoy still playing, and I have a little recording setup that I play with just for myself. I don't use my in terms of physical stuff, it's definitely steel. I like working in metal, um, particularly stainless steel, um, because it's so much fun. To know. <laughs> and how long have you been doing that? Uh, the steel stuff started probably about 20 years ago. Uh, I got into welding because of a job I had at the time. Welding was just something that was a good thing for me to learn how to do. Uh, so. It made me more valuable to my company, so and that was making cages for lions and tigers and things like that. How did you first come to express yourself through steel as an art form? Funny enough, because of the lions and tigers. Uh, I've been wanting to be around tigers my whole life, and I managed to get a job as a trainer, and very quickly realized that cages and metal fabrication was an important part of being around these animals, and welders are expensive. so. <laughs> We buy a welder, learn how to use it, and boom, we save a ton of quid. You know? And how has your hometown or your current living situation influenced your art? Well, I'm from right here in San Diego. Uh, I grew up here. I moved around a lot. Once I got old enough, I joined the circus, so that took me around the country. Uh, I lived in San Francisco for a while. Um, I lived in Las Vegas. I lived in Reno. And I think, especially the circus and, and traveling with bands and things like that, that really influences just how you look at it. And so, and what is art or an expression of, or your expression of what life is. So, I think, sort of comfortable in that familiarity that you know, the world's not as big as you think it is, and yet it's just a place. <laughs> so you said you were in the circus and you travel around a lot. Can you tell us a little about your artistic journey to this point in time? Well, as I say, when I started fabricating, it was mostly just doing cages and you know, very straightforward stuff. You know, everything right angles and that kind of thing. And as I started to branch out, as a welder, uh, I was fortunate enough to work for a company that made uh, props for magicians and illusionists. And I learned a whole lot about not just the welding and the cutting, but also the fabrication in terms and integrating that knowledge back into just sort of trying to figure out creative ways of doing stuff. I think just knowing that there are so many different ways of fabrication uh, and, and to build things and to, to express oneself. Uh, can you take us through your artistic process from start to finish? Well, it usually starts with quiet time. Uh, I like to sit somewhere without a TV, without radio or anything, just kind of visualize what it is I'm trying to build, trying to create. And once I can see it clearly in my head, then I can start to basically reverse engineer it and figure out how I can build it. What advice do you have for your fellow artists? Make mistakes. If, if you're going to make something, plan on making making it three times because you're going to mess it up every time. And so it's important to allow yourself those mistakes and know that they're going to happen and not get discouraged and not get uh, upset because everybody does it. I don't care how good you are as a fabricator, as a welder, as an artist, as a musician, everybody makes mistakes. And it's important to be okay with that. <laughs>